we go with our lovely Cormo Merino fleece. Look how clean and beautiful this is. We're going to be putting it in our little mesh laundry bags. Remember, you want plenty of room in here. Don't pack this tight because the water's got to be able to flow through this. If you pack this tight, it will still be greasy and dirty in the center of the fleece and only the outside will be clean. But more importantly, when you go to dye it, the grease is going to repel the dye and you'll have greasy, patchy, white areas, yellow lanolin areas. So a nice laundry bag that's like two-thirds full, like so. We're going to take our beautiful bag of fleece, and this is just under boiling with a cup of scour. And ever so slowly and gently do we push this in so it doesn't felt. Keep this at just under boiling, no movement in the water, for about 20 minutes. And we have a pan in the back just under boil for our rinse that we're going to transfer this to. This is wash number one. Our second wash, and as you can see when I pull it to the side, there's really no brown outgassing of lanolin and dirt. So one more rinse and we're ready to dye. Try that again. We put it in our rinse. And then what I like to do is just flip it over one time and fully submerge it. And as you can see, it's really not that much dirt left. So as we can see, two washes and two rinses, clear water, white fleece. And here is our fiber ready for dyeing. As you can see, just gorgeous, super white, and the fiber drafts apart easily. There's no felting. The locks obviously are not, you know, intact, but these are, this is how I clean fleece to card it, not for like locks on the side, but it's all so pretty. This is just from Mary Meadows Farm and it's gorgeous. So I diagram out each bat what the top is going to be dyed, bamboo, locks, silk, and nylon. Then I transfer that over to a list of how many per. Then I transfer everything into an Excel spreadsheet, number of ounces per color for locks, silk, and bamboo. And now we're ready to dye. This is some super curly BFL and tea water. We're going to take a little section of our BFL, put it in a bucket, and then I like to pour, this is all cold by the way, my dye stock, then I work the color in so that it's nice and evenly saturated, then we put our locks in the jar, pour the dye stock over it, And we're going to do that for all the colors I mixed up, which are right here under locks. Now that these are all filled, we got to put them in the Schaefer trays and heat set them. Into the heating cabinet they go. And I'm going to run this for two hours and let everything cool to room temperature before we rinse. Now we rinse. We're going to rainbow paint these beautiful tea swatter locks. So I have my dye set up, my 60 ml syringe, and I like really concentrated dye stock. And I'm going to go vertically so I can get a lot of color on each lock as opposed to clumps of different colors. There she is, ready to go. And we're going to turn this on and let her run for two and a half hours. Here we have our wonderful tea swatter drying. Propol is a high-grade textile detergent and it acts as a wetting agent for the silk. Silk is hydrophobic and if you don't do this step you'll have white patches in your dyed fiber. Silk, I have them pre-portioned. We're going to fill this sink with 
like warm water and about a quarter cup of synthrapol for six pounds of silk. We're gonna submerge it. And I actually manipulate the fiber and really work the water in. And we're gonna let this sit for a, at least a couple hours overnight if you can afford to. It is the next morning and the silk is thoroughly wetted out. I have my little silk bundles ready to go. Here's all our dye stock. First things first, we're gonna rinse out the soap. I've found that it traps some of the dye and you don't get a really rich color job if you leave your Synthropol soap in here. I do this in warm, not hot water. Doesn't take long. I like to take the silk, throw it in, grab the dye stock, pour it in over the top, and this has citric acid in, and I actually work it in. Then I flip it over, and that way, see these light sections? Those are gonna be white when you go to card it. So we want thorough color saturation, so I work the dye in, sort of like stomping grapes. That way you get nice, even color. These are gonna go into the proofer for two and a half hours and cool to room temperature. Every once in a while, for who knows exactly why, you'll do everything right, and the color will bleed. I rinsed this for a good five minutes and it's still bleeding. So that could be not enough citric acid, too much dye, right? More than 5% and you tend to get bleeds. So what we're gonna do is a hot soak in dye fixative from Dharma. So it's an ounce per pound. Hot water. Now we're gonna throw our fiber in that is leaking and I'm gonna move it around. I know, I'll be right up, buddy. And we're gonna let this sit for half an hour and then we're gonna rinse it in Synthrapol. There's a little bit of low foam Synthrapol. The label came off. You can get it at Dharma. And hot tap water. Now we're gonna take this, which was our dye fixative, and rinse it. Now it's going to go into our Synthropol bath, and I'm going to manipulate this. So after a good five minutes of agitating, we're going to rinse this out. And there you have it, nice and clear. This is a super dark teal proud of this heat warmer because I want to show you this is a 6% uh, degree of strength super deep violet and look at that crystal clear when we do the rinse out so this definitely gets hot enough and it definitely heat sets the fiber look how beautiful that is We have some bamboo with soda ash. I like dyeing them in these because I can get, you know, half a pound at a time. And here is my dye list for the bamboo. And there's the colors laid out in order. Ready for the bamboo. So I'm gonna take some of our dye powder. This is fiber reactive dye. And in it goes. Then I mix the dye powder with just a little bit of warm water. And we're gonna grab one of our marinated bamboo. And I'm gonna put it in the bucket. Same with the silk, we're gonna mix our dye stock in and work the dye in. Back in the bag it goes, and we're gonna let these sit for a full 36 hours before we rinse them out. Time to rinse out our bamboo, and this is gonna take the longest. So 
as you can see, it takes a while to get the dye to run clear, so it's probably going to take a good two to three minutes per color, plus the color remover and some Synthropol to get this to be Loctite. Two hours later, we're ready for the fabric softener. You don't have to get it scented. I do because I like the smell of it. The longest portion of this whole thing is to take 96 2 ounce fiber nests of merino and put them in here and then make the dye stock up and work the dye in. I'm going to dye these braided so I can get more color in a shorter space. Now we mix up all the dye stock. So the top is going to be for one colorway rust, terracotta, mahogany, slate, teal, navy, black. So each colorway has it all laid out like that. So now I got to mix up some dye stock. Mixing dye stock. Here's our citric acid. Here's the dyes for the teal and terracotta in order. We're going to mix our stock in really, really hot tap. Make sure that the citric acid also melts in. Now we take our rolling rack over to the first set right here. Now we grab up our dye and we work it in. Now remember, because these are loosely braided, you really, really, really want to work this dye in. Otherwise, you'll have white patches in between. And I like to hand massage. And here is part one. On goes the lid. Here it goes into the proofer. I'm gonna let these run for about two and a half hours. This is 10 um, eight ounce trays, meaning there's eight ounces of fiber in each. So that's five pounds. So I can realistically do 20 pounds in a full day. And here these are drying, ready to be carted up. Got all the dye powder in for our beautiful Firestar, which is a sparkly nylon. Mix up our dye stock and then we drop it in. Now, this is also known as trilobal nylon and I think also icicle from another manufacturer, but it takes dye beautifully. It doesn't um, felt, but it will actually melt if you put it on too high a heat. So I like to heat set these for 30 minutes and then let them cool for about 12 hours. Put these in a really deep Schaefer tray and then fill it with hot water. I use the hottest water that the tap will go and then I just put it here until it fills up. I'm just going to throw it on the burner for a half hour. So now I'm just going to turn it on and I'm going to put it up to maximum heat. Then I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes eh, and let it go. The Fire Star is so lovely and sparkly and the colors are really rich. We are moving on to making dye stock for the nylon. So I wrote out every color in the order it needs. Then I pulled out how many of each color separated by color, so we only make as much dye stock as we need. I do not store dye stock. I make dye stock that day, I use it that day, and the rest gets uh, dumped because over time I've noticed that it's just not as potent and it gets grainy and scummy and um, doesn't strike as well, it's patchy. So I make fresh dye stock every single batch.
We're doing dye stock again. If you want to know my personal dye stock recipe, go back to the video where I talk about how to calculate your degree of strength and then look in the description and you'll find a chart I made in a Google Doc. Open it up, print it out, and you'll have it. Move this back where this goes. And on and on we go through all of these. You should know this routine by now. Hot water, swirl, 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 more hot water. Load up purple pop, violet, navy, teal. Purple pop, violet, navy, and teal. This is one of the few colors I use from Jacquard. By the way, this isn't purple pop from Dharma that breaks too much. This is hot pink from ProChem with a tiny bit of violet mixed in. Brilliant violet. Favorite color of all time. This is only 4% degree of strength, and look how dark it is. True story, navy is quite red. And then when it heat sets, you don't see the red at all, just the near black inky blue color. And our teal from Jacquard. You can easily make this with ProChem turquoise and like two specks of yellow dye. Now I'm going to wipe up this excess dye just so it doesn't migrate and muddy up the color. What's the difference? Same color, same saturation, same dye batch on the right. It's a reddish orange and then you can see on the left we have our nylon how crazy saturated it is. Same with this blue, we have our merino on the right and this is a 22 micron merino. This is extreme blue from Dharma, same batch, same saturation, much brighter color. Okay, so this is several weeks worth of work. Each one of these is a pound and this represents the base for the colorway. Then we have the fleece, which is BFL, T. Slaughter, and Wensleydale locks. Here's all the bamboo in order by color. We have all the nylon here, Firestar, which is also nylon, and then our silk nests. And I have a hundred bags that I need to weigh all of this out and bag it into this. Here is the close up. I love these BFL locks. They're so crimpy and adorable and squishy and soft. This is probably the most time consuming part of putting these together is weighing out the bundles of tea swatter locks, the bamboo, the silk, the nylon, and then here's our roving and putting it all together in bags like this ready to be cut. Well, you can help me card them. So here's everything bagged up, weighed up, all of the tags made. This ends up actually being 104 bats. I didn't realize I'd made an extra colorway. So now we do that part. Crushed Opal's bat. We need to do a bit of pre-carding. So I have truly holographic silver, Angelina, mint, purple and pink and we're going to card this vertically and then strip it up to put into here. Now we're gonna pull this beauty off and now we're gonna card these in horizontally across the top of the bat. Yep, so now everything is in the layers and in the order that it's going to be carded in. Just like that, buddy. This is my roving holder, so it's tensioned. So this is why I like painting the roving ahead of time instead of using solid shade because you get this really great smooth gradient. 
Now we're going to paint on some of this lovely periwinkle lavender color. And this is um, local organic Polworth Merino crossbreed. Now I've laid out the silk and the bamboo in the order that I want it and we're going to feed it in one section at a time and obviously I love the strouch for being able to take all of this slick fiber and it doesn't gum up on the um, liquor in. Now we're going to take this painted nylon in these really beautiful cloud colors and roll that on over the top. So now you can see we've got that really wonderful, this is the Malibu Palms bat, that like sunset clouds effect. Now we're going to repeat that times three and I will show you the finished bat once these are all on. So now we're going to look up nice and close and you can see that there's a lot of great definition in between the layers. It's going to create a really beautiful Noro type effect with tweed. Those curly little pink locks are BFL. <laughs> this is my helper. And there is our finished result. I hope you like this video and if it helps you in your business or you're feeling generous, head over to my Ko-Fi and think about giving me a $3 coffee so I can continue making content freely available to the public like this. Indirect sunlight. Here's the little side cross view. You can see the beautiful Polworth locks in there. Really low micron. Lovely. And here we are in direct sunlight. The background is nearly black. It's so dark. It's like a more of like a jewel toned navy as opposed to a flat navy. Isn't she pretty? Let's get a really, really, really close up of all the sparkle.